Welcome to another edition of Timoteo TV. This is your Urban Bowl edition. Uh, let me introduce uh, my uh, cast today. I'm your host, Buddy Martinez, today. We have uh, Ryan from the Pac-9, Isaiah from the Raiders, and good faithful Chris Law over there. As you can see, our hosts have been dwindling as teams get knocked out of the playoffs, <laughs> but the show will continue strong. Um, I want to go over the schedule of this week's games. At 1 o'clock, you're going to have your Rising Stars uh, All-Star game. As you can see them rocking the jerseys, you're either red or you're blue. So if you were selected, uh, red or blue, if you were selected for this week's uh, team, um, you know, if you didn't go to practice, find out on the, on the website so you can see which team you're playing for. I believe they're getting there a little early to practice. Contact your coach. Be the best game ever like is they practicing they're actually taking it serious this, this is gonna be ball this and we have a, a lot of, we have a lot of yeah, phenomenal yeah. talent this yeah, year in this uh, rising good. stars challenge and then you're gonna have your urban bowl at 2 30 which is gonna be between the pack nine and the raiders and then closing it out we're gonna be closing the year off with our senior bowl uh at four o'clock uh and that's gonna take us for the whole week here so uh why don't we uh have ryan why don't you break us down a little bit on what were the keys to success of beating the Colts last week? What did you guys do that was that worked really well? So last game, last week, we uh, we executed the ball good. Like we <clears> was <throat> passing, we was completing passes, we was spreading the ball around, making catches. Everybody played their part on defense. We was just we came out and played pack nine ball like <clears> we <throat> should do. This week we should do the same thing. I don't see no difference. Gotcha. Here we go. And uh, and Isaiah, you guys made light work of the the Raiders. There, they kind of gave you a close game, and uh, then you guys like pulled that. away. Well, it was a sloppy game, but we still got the W. First half, uh, we were just all over the place, making silly mistakes, tipping up the ball, not smacking it down, or picking it off. Second half, Drew, from another world, as I say, man, he just came out torching them. They couldn't score at all. Our defense stepped up big time, and Drew just did what Drew does. We gonna miss you, bro. Good. All right. Hey, Chris, why don't you start us off, man? Uh, what do you think about this matchup here? Yeah. You got two uh, two uh, Hall of Fame teams, as you could yeah. say, uh, entering this uh, this uh, championship. Yeah, this, there's a lot of history between these two teams. The Packers have been in the, uh, the league for nine years, and the Raiders have been in the league for 12 years from its beginning. This is the 12th season. Um, in that <coughs> time, the Packers have gone 47 and 16 with the, the the 75 percent win percentage, which is the highest of any team that's been in the league at least three years or more. The only team that had more than that was the Broncos, but they're only in for two years. Um, the Raiders are 54 and 33 with a 62 percent. Um, but the, the real difference here is the Packers, even though they they had the highest win percent, has never won the Urban Bowl. Only been the Urban Bowl once. That was their second year, 2009. The Raiders have won three chips. If they win one more, they'll uh, tie uh, the most uh, Urban Bowls with the Eagles, who have four. Um, if they win this next one, they'll, they'll be a dynasty because it's it, there'll be four Urban Bowl or three Urban Bowls in the last four years. Um, another thing, the Packers have one MVP. 2013, they had White Boy. Uh, the um, Raiders have two MVPs throughout the season, and that's the Marrero brothers. Uh, the Packers have a Christian character. Raiders, they don't have any Christian characters. Who knows? Maybe this year. Uh, well, I'll go through all the stats. I broke down every single stat. The Packers lead in every single statistical category except for interceptions. They have the most passing touchdowns. Uh, receptions, touchdowns, pats, tackles, sacks, you name it, you go on there. The Packers have every single sack except for interceptions. The Cowboys actually have 165, whereas the Pac-9 have uh, 160. So um, with that, the Raiders, they're in the top five of just about every category. They're around five, six, three. They're, they're second in receptions. They're fifth in t passing touchdowns. Um, but when you look at it, the Raiders know how to win a game. And that's the biggest thing, right? And so there's a lot of talk this week that, hey, the Raiders, you know, their quarterback, who I think it was the best quarterback in the league in terms of just form and the way he could produce, is not going to be there this week. Now, if I were a coach of the Raiders, the first thing I would do is I would just come out and let you know, hey, he's not going to be here. There's no way in the world we can win. Because if you can get the Packers sleeping on the Raiders, that's how the Raiders are going to win this game, is they're going to get the Packers sleeping. The Packers, I don't know. The Packers throughout history have <coughs> been favored in a lot of the games, a lot of playoff games, and, and, and every time they've been favored, they lose to an inferior opponent. So this game is, is, is matching up to the same kind of thing. The Packers have never been able to get over the Raider hurdle in the playoffs. Whenever they face them in the playoffs, 
they lose. I think this game could go either way. I don't care who's quarterback and who's not quarterback. And I don't care what's happening. I think that the single deciding factor of this whole game is going to be Percy. Percy goes to every Raiders practice. He goes to every Packers practice. He goes to every – whenever the Raiders play, he's on your sideline. We play the Pack 9 he's on their sideline. What sideline does Percy go on? Because the sideline Percy <laughs> goes on is the one that I think the team wins. And, and I have no idea what sideline he's going to pick. So whoever sideline Percy is on, I think they're going to win 27-26. It's going to be close. 27-26, yep. whoever Percy sideline whoever goes sideline on. Whoever sideline Percy's on. Gotcha now. So, and you uh, can't force the Percy. <laughs> That's one thing. I, this past week, he, he was staying on the Raiders sideline. So I was, oh, you go go move him over to the Panther side. You can't move him to the Panther. It's gotta you gotta let the Percy pick because without the Percy, if you force the Percy, it's not gonna happen. You're gonna lose. There you go. It's yeah. all about the Percy. Gotcha, Isaiah. What do you? What, what are your feelings going into the end of this game? Uh, well, I'm a little down because we're missing Drew, the best quarterback in the league. But I have faith in whoever steps up and plays quarterback. Honestly. Uh, we got great coaches, Heck and Rob, and I just think we could get the job done. And we're gonna have to win it defensively, honestly. Uh, we're gonna win. Gotcha. What, 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 what's your score? Who do you have? Uh, if you had to predict? Um, well, the only numbers that really matter is four zero. We're gonna have four chips at the end of this game, mm. and they're gonna still have zero. But I think Ooh, it's gonna be a close game. Uh, I give them the benefit of the doubt. 35-32, but Raiders. Gotcha. Hey, Ryan, uh, what, what do you have to say, man? How, how are you feeling going into this championship? Uh, I'm emotional, kind of. Like, this is my first time ever making it to the championship. It's like I've been in it <coughs> three years, three years, and I I mean, I felt short. Last year I fell in the second round, you know what I mean? It kind of hurt it. This year going all the way, it, it felt good. I mean, it felt good. We got good coaches, Dave, Mike. I mean, we got a good team. Our offense, we stick as a family. Played one pack, one fan, one team. I mean, always ride for each other. Gotcha. So, who, so what, what score do you have in this game? Well, <clears throat> the Raiders are good. So, I give them the benefit of the doubt, too. I give them 25-32 Packers. 25-32 20, Packers? Mm, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Everyone, I think, I believe, in Urban Bowl history, there might have been only one Urban Bowl that I can remember, maybe two, where there's been a, a, a large margin of victory. I think mm -hmm. every other close. Urban Bowl has always been close. Um, and in these playoffs, the Packers are averaging 52 points on offense, 19.5 points on defense. The Raiders are averaging 36 points on offense and 27.5 points allowed on defense. Their margin of victory is 8.5 against their opponents, and the Packers is 32.5. So going in, the Packers have been running through teams. Uh, the Raiders have been beating their teams convincingly, but it's been a little bit closer. Uh, and that's all up from the regular season. The regular season, the Packers were at 39 points, uh, allowing 19.75 points. So the, I guess their defense has gotten a little bit better in the playoffs. You sound like me over there. Yeah. Down, and, and the Raiders um, <laughs> offensively in the regular season are 27.3 points and then allowing 29. So, so – both teams have gotten better mm -hmm. coming into this game. Um, you got the big six uh, receivers on the Packers. You got Bello, Matt, Cisco, Ryan, Jeremy, and Khalif. That is a pretty amazing lineup mm -hmm. there. And then on the Raiders side, you got Edwin, Josty, Isaiah, Kyrie, Kevin, and Barack. Um, I know going into going into this uh, this 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 championship game, a lot of people are thinking that. Andrew was the turning point of the season when Andrew came. That's when things kind of turned around. But I believe that these other players have stepped up and gotten better yeah. throughout the year, and they've kind of really gelled as a team. Um, we talk about um, the Packers just being their first time in the Urban Bowl in a little while, but let's look at the Vikings. The Vikings have merged with the Raiders. This is Carlos's first rodeo. This is mm. Hector's first yeah. rodeo uh, yeah. as a coach in the uh, – in the Urban Bowl. So I know Carlos is excited to be here, but he wants to win more than anything. Uh, and going into this game, I mean, Rob and his staff over there has so much experience. These guys, I mean, if they're going to dissect the, their, uh, the Packers off, they're going to come with everything they got, especially if they feel like they have nothing to lose mm -hmm. uh, going into this game. So the Packers, you guys have to be ready because they're going to bring it. You know what I mean? And anybody who thinks this game is going to be one-sided, I believe, no 
is crazy yep. going into this game. I believe this is going to be one of the best Urban Bowls ever. Uh, you know, Dave's coming in as a rookie head coach. I don't know how many rookie we head coaches we ever had reached the Urban Bowl their first year. Uh, but uh, but this should be a good game here. It's going to come down to who executes, who makes plays, who wants it more. And sometimes the ball just bounces in the right yeah. spot, and there's nothing that you can kind of do about that. So whoever makes the less mistakes, I believe, will win. Uh, going into this game, I'm going to have to say I'm going to lean towards the Packers. I just think Shane right now is playing phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the Raiders can keep up offensively uh, with with the Packers, but their defense have gotten better. Yeah. So I believe it's still going to be a close game, but I'm going to edge it to the Packers. I got this game going 35-34, close game. Yeah, Could come down to extra points. Yeah. I believe Alex, uh, Alex might be playing quarterback for the Raiders this week. I know he is upset after his first week's performance against the Packers, kind of wants some revenge uh, from that game, and I'm sure they will not put up that kind of performance. No, not at all. Real quick, guys, um, who do you guys think is going to be your impact player of the game for this Urban Bowl? <clears throat> so let's go with you, Chris. Why don't you break it down? Yeah, who do you think uh, is the I, impact I think player? Well, give me an impact player for the Pac-9 and an impact player for the Raiders. <clears throat> well, I think um, I think it's going to be uh, Pello, I think, for the, for the Pac-9. I mean, I think the way he's playing this year, if you looked at his stat line last year, uh, it was about the same as my stat line last year. And, um, and, and uh, <laughs> this year, I mean, he's just a phenomenal player. I mean, he just has stepped up his game. And I think uh, he is going to give whoever is quarterback a headache. And, uh, and I think that that's going to be a real uh, key there. And I think um, it's going to be, I think, Edwin for the Raiders. I mean, he's had a, a really good year this year. Uh, I think he's going to have to really even step up more. Uh, and, and he can't drop in. I mean, he's got to he's got to really step up in terms of leadership this this uh, week. I mean, this is his last game. I mean, he's 18 years old. He's done. So this is he's got to put it all out there on the table. But I think um, yeah, I, I think those are the two that are gonna be it. Um, but I think also you can't you can't sleep on Rob as the coach, man. I think he's just. Um, <laughs> he's got a game plan. He, he sees what's happening. He knows the adjustments he's got to make. He makes adjustments constantly before game, middle game, and I think. Edwin and with Rob, I think you can't sleep on him being the, the, the game changers. Gotcha. Who do you got, Isaiah? Who do you have for, for the Raiders being your impact player of the game? Uh, I also agree with Chris. Edwin has been a big stud in our team, both offensively and defensively. Uh, on defense, like people really don't notice him, but he really he is a stud on defense. Um, 19 I think, tackles, four interceptions yeah, this year. Mm -hmm. um, he do, he's jump balls with anybody it doesn't matter whether you're bigger or stronger he'll go up with you but yeah i agree edwin he's gonna have to show up and show out today this is his last game bro congratulations on graduating tomorrow too gotcha so what do you got for the pack nine who are you most worried about on the pack nine who do you guys got to stop uh, i ain't worried about nobody oh. but um <laughs> shane shane i i played with him at frankfurt also but i didn't know he had a cannon of an arm like that though but <laughs> Yeah, he. I watched him pick apart defenses left and right. We're going to come at him now. Gotcha. And which which position do you play on defense? Middle linebacker. So you're going to be right in the middle of yes, all of this here. Yes. And how many flags you got so far this year? I'm not even sure. You but got 20. I think they be cheating me, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be feeling like more. Uh, gotcha. So, Ryan, so why don't you break down the Pac-9 first. Who do you think is going to be the impact player on the Pac-9? For me, my, uh, my impact player of the uh, game, the pack nine is gonna be Bello, cause Bello, I gotta give it to him. He does his thing out there. He 40, goes out there. Forty-three ball. catches, nine yeah, touchdowns, 40, 30, thirty tackles, catches. twenty-two sacks. Yeah. He does his thing out there. <clears throat> I mean, he does his job. He goes out there with a goal to get at least three sacks a game, and he achieves that goal. He goes out there do his thing. He gets sacks left and right. He gives the quarterback head headaches, like Chris mm -hmm. said. Yeah. So, Bello is my packer. Gotcha. Oh, and, and, and how about for the Raiders? So who do you think for the Raiders you most worried about on the Raiders? For the Raiders? Nah, nobody. <laughs> nobody from the Raiders. If you had to pick one. If I had to pick one, <clears throat> uh, it would be Isaiah. Isaiah, he plays good defense. He knows how to read the ball. He catches picks. He does his thing out there, too. I mean, he goes out there, plays his part on defense, do his thing. From what I hear, a lot of times this Isaiah is more focused on his hair than grabbing flags. <laughs> but uh, but I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out this week. Um, for me, I guess it comes down to quarterback play. Uh, and I'm going to have to say 
Uh, I know it's pretty basic, but, you know, Shane takes good care of the ball and, and continues to drive down the field. I believe he is your impact player of the week. But, you know, if they win, could possibly be Urban Bowl MVP uh, going into his last year. That's something the Pac-9 have never got. They've never gotten an Urban Bowl MVP. Um, and and with the Raiders, um, you're gonna have to. Uh, he's gonna have to be Alec. I mean, depending on how Alex plays, um, if he's nervous, then this game could get out of hand if he doesn't come ready to play. But I know Alex is. Uh, he's ready. He's hungry. He wants to win, and he he has definitely improved a lot this season. I don't know how many reps he's been getting at backup quarterback uh, during practices or whatnot. But uh, I'm sure this week he's getting all the reps. Mm -hmm. And I know Rob is going to try to put him in the best position uh, to make plays going down the field. And that can – and he's the, he's the unknown. You don't know what kind of player you can have. Uh, all I do know is that momentum plays a huge factor. When you're going into the game as a favorite, it's hard to grab momentum because everyone else would like to see an upset. Mm -hmm. Everyone always cheering for an upset. And in this case, I guess you got the Pac-9 favored by a couple points in this game, especially since Andrew's not out yeah. there. But uh, so, the, you know, the Pac-9, if they want to win this game, they're going to have to be mentally tough because uh, if, uh, if, they, if they let the fans and whatnot get in their heads, they're going to blow this game. You know what I mean? And, and, and with the Raiders kind of feeling, they, they say, we got nothing to lose. You know, we're going out there to win. You know, and they're still confident. You know, even not having it could be a scary thing, especially if they kind of get momentum mm -hmm. uh, going in. But, uh, but yeah, guys, I guess that kind of breaks yeah. down your uh, your Urban Bowl edition here. Uh, make sure you come out to the field. We're going to go over the schedule again. 1 o'clock, be there for the Rising Star Challenge. If you're not sure if you're on a team or not, check out the website. Check out the mobile app so you can uh, see. Contact one of the coaches. They'll let you know what time to be there to warm up. And then at 2.30, you have your heavyweight bout between the Pac-9 and the Raiders. This has been in, you know, we, we, they've been trying to get together in the Urban Bowl for years, you yeah. know, and the Packers haven't held the end, the Pac-9 haven't held the end. But, uh, and then we have our farewell game to our seniors, our Senior Bowl at 4 o'clock. So come be there, enjoy, come check out all the games. It's going to be fun. Uh, I'll see you out there.